Such disasters seem utterly discouraging. Yet Bunyan's hymn says, there's no discouragement. William Purdy Trelaw tried to prove it. It was to help children disabled by accident, disease, or from birth, that nearly 60 years ago, when Lord Mayor of London, he set out to do something permanently to benefit disabled children. He obtained the wholehearted support of Queen Alexandra, and in 1906, the Lord Mayor's Little Cripple Fund was launched. Two years later, at Alton, he founded the Lord Mayor Trelawa Cripples Home and College under the management of a board of trustees. The home became one of the best known orthopedic hospitals for children in the country. That's the way. In the hospital grounds was the college which provided technical training for up to 60 disabled boys between the ages of 14 and 18. In 1948, great changes came with the National Health Service when the Ministry of Health took over the hospital and the trustees had really to re-found the college as a separate establishment. For this purpose, they bought the Foyle Place estate a few miles away. An avenue forming the old drive leads through the park to the beautiful Elizabethan mansion which the trustees converted.
they built the extensions needed to house the cottage as it then was. In 1953, the cottage moved from the hospital to its new home. In 1956, further extensions were finished, enabling the cottage to increase its members from 60 to 130, and to provide full-time educational courses in addition to a wider range of technical training courses. Today, boys from very varied backgrounds and from all over the British Isles come to the college. The range of disabilities is very great, but the college caters for any disabled boys, except the blind, the deaf, the dumb, and those whose chief or only disability is epilepsy. The minimum age for admission has been lowered to 11. Until they are 16 at least, all the boys follow a full-time educational course. The more able ones take a grammar school course leading to the examinations for the GCE and may continue it beyond the age of 16 if necessary to the upper age limit of 20. An alternative equivalent to a secondary modern school course includes 10 periods weekly of technical work introductory to training courses. For boys over 16, six three-year training courses are now provided. Surgical boot and shoe making and ordinary making and repairing are taught in the boot shop. It is apparent that machines must be adapted for the use of boys in chairs. The more advanced boys do work under contract for the Ministry of Health. This boy's disability is the result of electric burns in an accident such as we saw at the beginning of the film. Seriously disabled, our young friend eventually found his way to Toulouse. Now, at the end of his time, he is a fully qualified surgical bootmaker. Something to be pleased about. In the tailor shop, the college blazers and other clothes for boys in the college are made and a number of outside orders fulfilled.
The radio and television servicing course was started after the last war. It equips boys for employment not only in the radio and television trade, but also a number of allied trades. Boys from the three courses which you have just seen may take the appropriate examinations of the City and Guilds of London Institute. In the Commercial Subjects course, they prepare for the Diploma examinations of the Faculty of Secretaries. Bookkeeping, commercial arithmetic and shorthand are taught. Some boys attain shorthand speeds of 120 words a minute. Typewriting, of course, is also taught, and some reach the advanced standard. The college magazine is produced as part of the work of this course. Then a training course in gardening is offered, for the college has extensive gardens and grows a lot of the vegetables and fruit for the kitchen. Yes, boys receive an all-round training, both out of doors and in the greenhouses. There is also a course in pig and poultry keeping. Modern methods are used for the poultry and provide the college with eggs and table birds. The pigs, pigs are bred for sale. On completion of their training or on reaching the upper age limit, boys are given help in finding suitable employment. The great majority find it, though sometimes in rather unexpected environments. Here, for instance, at the Taylorian Institute in Oxford, an old boy is sorting and piecing together ancient papyrus manuscripts from Egypt. Every day life at the college is as much as possible like that of any other boarding school. Boys attend prayers in the assembly hall each weekday morning. On Sundays, there is a college service in the parish church. Now this is close to the college building. Covered ways, with ramps instead of steps, facilitate movement for many boys who have to rely entirely on wheelchairs. Electrically driven wheelchairs have revolutionized the lives of the most severely handicapped boys. Motor chairs give great independence out of doors to older badly disabled boys at the college and after they have left.
In the dining hall, all the boys have their meals together. The hall makes a pleasant setting for the traditional supper on the last evening of each Christmas term. Decidedly, a, a gay occasion. The boys are divided between two houses, each in charge of a resident housemaster. The 60 boys over the age of 16 occupy Jefferson House, the original Elizabethan mansion. Burnham House, in the new buildings, takes 70 boys under 16. Now each has its own common rooms. And library and games room. But many forms of recreation take place here. two thoughtful characters. Yes, he must have a go. And they won't accept defeat. contain the cheerful, well-equipped sick bay with fully qualified residence staff. There is a visiting medical officer and an orthopedic consultant who examines all the boys each term. Uh, if they should need it, boys are given orthopedic treatment in the Lord Mayor Trelawa Hospital, with which a close link is still maintained.
although boys are encouraged and taught to be as independent and self-reliant as possible, there could be a limit to jolly good effort and so good for the springs. Inevitably, some need help in dressing and undressing. Here's an example. Getting out of this encumbrance is not easy. But there's always someone to give a hand. This is a Milwaukee jacket, and it's no joke getting out of this one, as you can see. is an essential no matter how tricky. Now for bars, well many can manage on their own. Now simple fittings help a lot. No dirty necks allowed here. The batteries which power these chairs must be recharged overnight. As you would imagine, games play an important part in the lives of many of the boys. The cricket, for example. The college has a football team, and even archery has its devotees. Cricket again, but of a different sort. And here showed the true spirit of the boys trying. They will have a go, they must. Now some games, even indoors, are far from gentle and, as you see, not cumbered with many rules. Sorry for the referee.
swimming in the heated pool is an activity which transforms many a boy who either cannot walk at all or does so with great difficulty. And of course, the water is buoyant in, and helps them with their disabilities to float and to swim, to strike out. A water polo is a popular sport, and the college boasts quite a formidable team, capable of taking on services, university, and other men's teams. Under the same roof as the fine swimming pool is a remedial gymnasium. A lot of ragging and scragging and some activities are planned to give strength. A lot of fit people couldn't do that. That's a pretty good effort. Another strong man in embryo. And this is to encourage mobility. There are many specially designed pieces of apparatus. Also, simple ones suitable for individual needs. The spare time activities are bound. There's a painter making Christmas cards, art, handicrafts of all kinds, recane chairs, like any gypsy, good basket work, carpentry, pottery. Some boys make their own musical instruments. Once a year, a play is produced. A number of boys have music lessons, and some, having made their own instruments, make their own music too.
more. There's a model railway club. There's a photographic society with its own dark room. A stamp club. And a field society for boys interested in natural history. There are also some keen bridge players. Each house has its own scout troop. The scouts have their weekend camps in the summer. And they take part in all kinds of local scouting activities. Now here are college scouts at a county camp. Perhaps you'll agree that all in all, this is as full and as active a life as you might expect for boys without any handicap at all. It is said that every picture tells a story. Well, you have seen pictures which so vividly tell their own story, we might well say that a commentary to emphasize its significance is scarcely needed. Sixty years, during which much has been achieved since Trelawa started his great work. Yet it seems that the greatest achievement is to come. The trustees are now building the Florence Trelawa School, a splendid new school for similarly handicapped girls. In due time, the girls will also know and share Trelawa's wonderful benefits, share too the true spirit of the foundation to overcome every physical disability with that spirit and will to do, which is so abundantly evident amongst those boys of Trelawes. <laughs>